Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. For today's video, I'm going to tackle a subject that I've been asked a lot about by various viewers, and that is, how is Giga Texas actually organized, both for the construction of the facility, but also for production? How do they know where items need to go? How do they know where to make deliveries? If they're describing where something is in the factory internally, how do they say where exactly it is located? Because it's such a large facility, they need to have some sort of coordinate system, and in fact, they do. And as you'll see in this discussion, it's all about the grid lines. As you can see with this illustration, Giga Texas is organized into a grid pattern, such as the one that you see here. In addition, depending on which part of the factory we're talking about, there are up to four floors, and each floor uses this same basic grid pattern. So let's discuss this in detail. Here you can see the grid pattern is listed west to east, starting with A and going to Z, or sometimes Z1. There is no I, so they skip over that because it would probably be you know, confusing to see that on the uh, grid pattern throughout the factory. And the Z or Z1 is a slight discontinuity based on where you are in the factory on that east side. Next, you can see that there is a north-south grid numbered 1 all the way through 84. And this is also replicated on all four floors, depending on which section of the factory we are looking at. Where these grid lines come together, they make these squares, and they're generally spaced about 47 and a half feet, or about 14.5 meters. And that's give or take about 2 feet, or 0.65 meters, because it's hard to get an exact measure. But every time you see one of these squares made up of four columns, this is the approximate size that we are talking about. And as I suggested, each of the intersection points of the grids is where a column is generally installed. Now there are a few exceptions, and some of those are in the casting or stamping machine structures, or the newly constructed high bay and stamping extension in that uh, middle and south end of the building. There are also some discontinuities in how the grid is laid out. And specifically, you can see here, A and B are actually much narrower and closer together than the regular spacing. And what they did to make up for this discontinuity is that they added a supplementary row of columns in the general assembly area listed as BB, as indicated. And this is between grid lines B and C. Another area of discontinuity is that grid Z1 on the east side. This seems to have been installed in the southern area of the stamping machine structure, but it is not present in the north end at the casting machine structure. So somewhere along the east side, the Z and the Z1 become the same grid. But I'm not sure exactly where. Here's another area of discontinuity with the grid pattern. In the casting machine structure, where they used steel columns abutting the paint shop, they are marked T, and then from east at that point, they are marked U, W, X, and Y, and Z. But there is no V and there is no Z1 for some reason. And finally, one other area of discontinuity, this has to do with the floors, is that generally speaking, there are up to four floors. However, in several sections, including the battery cell, the general assembly, and the paint shop, there are floors two and a half or three and a half. And why they did this, that I don't know either. But overall, I'm just trying to give a good, accurate picture of the way the grid pattern at Giga Texas works. So again, to wrap up, it is a grid pattern listed A through Z from the west to the east and 1 through 84 from the north to the south. Generally, columns line up on each of the intersections. The sections that make squares from the four columns at the grid points are about 47 and a half to, uh, feet to about 14 and a half meters, give or take. There are some discontinuities with the grid as we discussed, and also some discontinuities of how the floors are co constructed and uh, labeled. So now let's turn our attention to each of the floors and how they are arranged. As you can see by this particular illustration, this is the ground floor and is the one that we are most familiar with because it's what is the most easily visible and was also mostly visible within the Cyber Rodeo event. And I'll be drawing on a lot of images from that event to give you an illustration of how this all works. 
But if you look at this, uh, we can talk briefly about where each of the sections are located. Starting in the northwest corner at grid A1, this is where the 4680 battery cell production takes place. Moving south to grid A20, this area is General Assembly 1 where the vehicle takes the final form. Grid lines 44 alpha is uh, where the main entrance begins and also where General Assembly lines 2 and 3 are in construction. Moving to grid line O1, this is where the paint shop starts. Then grid line O37 is where the driveline manufacturing happens. And then from O54 south is the high bay and stamping extension areas. And then we'll turn our attention to Z6. This is where the casting machine structure begins. Then moving south to Z20, this is where body and white begins. At about uh, Z40 is where the secondary east entrance is located. And then further to the south at about Z68 and further south is where the stamping machine structure is located. Here we're moving up to the second floor and you can see how generally the factory is organized. You can see that there are some second floor elements of the battery cell production, the Tesla offices, which is where the headquarters is located, the main entrance, general assembly lines two and three, an unknown construction location in that area as well, which is under construction, the plastics manufacturing, the paint shop, the drive line, the body in white, and also the secondary main entrance on the east side also has a second floor component. Moving up another floor to the third floor, you can see that there are sections of the battery cell production, the battery pack production, an unknown in construction and future expansion with temporary storage currently, as you can see with the green sections. The paint shop has three areas that have floor number three or three and a half, and the body in white also has two areas in that northern section near the paint shop that has a third floor segment. Finally, the only area of the factory that I'm aware of that has a fourth floor is over the battery cell production location. This is where HVAC components and piping and also an unknown section, as you can see, is located. So now that we know how the factory is organized on all four floors using the grid pattern, I want to give you some practical examples of how this operates. Now, during Cyber Rodeo, I was able to see this portion of General Assembly where they're putting the cars together, as you can see by the inset photo. One of the columns shows F35, and I've indicated where in the factory this part of the production line is located. Just note that this is on the ground floor. As many of you may recall, there were these interestingly shaped deliveries that came to Giga Texas about a month ago, and I saw them arriving, and then we got some Im images from the inside. And you can see here, they're passing by this column listed as U27 on the ground floor. And I've indicated where this is located in the north end of the body and white section of Giga Texas. And in this example, we are looking at the third floor in the north part of the battery cell production area. And you can see all of the machinery that are used to produce the 4680s. On the column, you can see it's listed as a B9, and I've indicated where that is located on the grid map. Here's another shot I took while I was at the Cyber Rodeo. This is on the ground floor in the driveline section. You can see what they are producing here by the image. The column is listed as Q42, and I've indicated where that is located in the driveline section of this grid map. In this image, it's a great look into the casting machine structure about midway uh, towards the east side. You can see that they are assembling some bridge crane rails um, getting ready for the IDRA 9000 ton gigapress. The column is listed as Y11 and you can see on the grid mark where this is located. Another image I took during Cyber Rodeo, this is in the General Assembly production line. You can see that the column is listed as M34 and on the grid map, you can see exactly where this is located. Another image I took during Cyber Rodeo is this part of the General Assembly. You can see the bodies being moved by these robotic machines. The column is listed as J39, and I've indicated on the grid map where this is located, also on the ground floor. 
Here's another great picture inside the casting machine structure, this time of one of the large bridge cranes that's been installed. You can notice that they're using concrete columns in this example. The location is W11. You can see where that is located in the grid map. Interesting enough, from this location and further to the west, this bay is where they are preparing right now the foundations for two IDRA 9,000 ton gigapresses. Moving just a little bit south of the previous image, you can see this part of the factory that is right at the delineation point between the casting machine and the body and white sections. And this is a really good image of this equipment. It's listed as W20, and you can see in the grid map where this is located. Here's a really good image inside the stamping machine structure on the southeast side. And in the image, you can see two of the very large stamping machine structures. And nearby, you can see these rolls of steel and aluminum, which are used by these very large machines to stamp out body parts. This is location Y81 on this concrete column. And you can see in the grid map where this is located, also on the ground floor. In fact, the entire stamping machine structure is only one level. The reason why they use concrete columns is that they support these very large and heavy bridge cranes. Moving over to the west side of the building, we have a view inside the third floor here of the General Assembly and Battery Pack location. In particular, here they are currently stockpiling a lot of 4680 structural packs, as you can see. The location is B42, and in the grid map, you can see exactly where this is located. In this example, we're on the far southwest of the factory and is looking inside both the third and the second floor with views down even to the ground floor in this particular example. Now, this is at F84, and you can see on the grid map exactly where this is located. This is a rare image that shows three of the floors in one picture. And my final example is right outside the main entrance that is currently as of the end of November 2022 being reconfigured and you can see some of that work in this picture. Now the location is B50. You can see exactly where this is located and in fact in this picture you can see two floors. The reconfiguration of the ground floor inside the main entrance and also the third floor of the General Assembly which is currently being used for material storage as you can see. It's also worth noting that this is one of the areas of the building where there's a floor discontinuity. About halfway up on the ground floor, there's actually a second floor, a second and a half floor, which is really kind of a mezzanine, and that is also being reconfigured at this time. So there you have it. Now you know how Giga Texas is organized using a grid system labeled west to east, A through Z, or Z1 sometimes, and also north to south 1 through 84. They also have four distinct floors generally speaking and how much of the floor space varies uh, depending on which section of the factory you're in and there's a few discontinuities with floors as a two and a half or a three and a half floor exists and there's also a few discontinuities with the grid as well as we discussed. But overall this is how they've been constructing Giga Texas. This is where they knew how to bring building materials and supplies. And this is also being adopted for production to show where production materials, where equipment is located, and also to give a general map for employees to know where and what part of the factory they are going to. I would like to thank many of my Patreons for their support and help in developing all of this information confirming the grid pattern and the floor layout. I couldn't have done it without all of your help. I do hope that you found this information, the illustrations and discussions helpful and useful and helps put into context what you're seeing with the continued construction of Giga Texas and also as we turn more and more towards production and what's going on inside the factory. Also, if you ever see any images from inside the factory and if you can see the uh, columns with the markings, you can use this grid to identify exactly where it's located. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day.